Christians who are supposed to be part of this success story to frustrate Chief Michael Zekume from giving him, giving him his best in this case. This case, he relatively done it unproven. Relatively did it unproven. He was, every strategy was deployed towards frustrating him, but he said no, because he's on a divine mandate. I want to appreciate him. I may not go into details, but I want to appreciate him so immensely for also believing in me too and believing in my convictions and judgment too. Marx also appreciates so greatly the contribution of Her Excellency Mrs. Suche Chikano, the wife of Mazen Nabikano. Her words of, word of encouragement, wise counseling, and also believe in us. Throughout this terrific moment, period. Even when those who are also supposed to be part of this success story, we are ferociously working against us, blackmailing us, doing things possible to chase us away from this case. This woman remains firm, remains strong in her convictions and believe in us. I must appreciate her. Also, my thanks also go to my friend and also my client, Alchike Dozem. He's a gentle man who also believes in us. It was a very hard fight. But thank God today that we, are, we have achieved the victory, the long awaited victory. I appreciate him too. I also want to appreciate my professional colleagues. We are part of this story, this, this success story. The contribution of my erudite head of chambers, Barista Mrs. Stu Mumeche, cannot be overemphasized. I also want to mention Master Opera, Nemeke Joff, and of course, Aloy Jimako, those who, are, who work tirelessly to ensure that we get to where we are today. Of course, I cannot conclude this piece without appreciating so immensely my wife who has been there for me for her prayers and also my lovely children for their prayers i cannot thank them all my thanks also goes to the erudite formidable media warriors who has been there for us who has been taking bullets for me in particular when the enemies were on rampage doing everything humanly possible to derail me, to distract me. They were taking the blood for me. My thanks goes to, I was single two of them out to appreciate. Not that others didn't contribute, they did excellent work. Because when they were taking this bullet, I was busy working. I never lost focus. I was giving my best, doing all things we can, working behind the scene to ensure that we get, we get the best results. I will not forget to mention persons like Ken Guruago, he has done so marvelously well. I must appreciate him. Also appreciate Prince Darlington. They are there for us at every given time. They were there taking bullets for us. I must appreciate them. May they remain blessed. They are too minimal, numerous to mention. They are too numerous to mention. Kulubu Mushineke, who were there praying for us. Reverend Fathers, Bishops, Catholic priests and call them, name them, traditional worshippers who are also praying to ensure that we get to out today. I must immensely appreciate them. It is a time to appreciate those who work tirelessly to ensure that we get to out today because I know that this is the end of the game, no matter what. You all we are in court yesterday to hear from the court. Unfortunately, those that the person of Attorney General of the Federation, regardless of that prejudice to his person, an office is occupied, should have by yesterday honorably tendered his resolution as the Minister of Federation. Because he has exposed this country to ridicule. It's not, it's not in doubt that at the point Namdekano was abducted, was abducted in Kenya, because it's important also, also important to emphasize 
just like where this is of people analyzing this morning. Court didn't say arrest. Court of appeal in his judgment yesterday in the United States didn't mention arrest. They agreed up with us in totality that Nandekano was abduction. Abduction kidnapping was featured prominently in the judgment of the court. They agree with us because in the manner in which he was abducted in Kenya, he wasn't arrested, he wasn't arrested. Now, and it was pushed to the advice of the Attorney General of the Federation that the, that the federal government speak into another country to abduct his citizen without subjecting him to the extradition proceedings. And on the ground, that ground alone, the federal government, the Attorney General of the Federation should, should, be, should have been resigned honorably without being asked, without a further prompting. I am not con con contesting the fact they have right of appeal to Supreme Court. It's a, it's a constitutional right. But what is sacrosanct at this point in time is that they must wholly and in totality comply with the order of, of, the, of the Court of Appeal, which directed that the country should be released immediately. They will not be in breach of this order, in content of this order, and they applying to Supreme Court for review or, or for, 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 for or, 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 or appeal. They must comply without further prado. So it's expected, of course, they were called yesterday to when the judgment was read. But of course, uh, uh, unfortunately, I believe that the letter that Attorney General of Federation, you know, I don't think he, he he's conversant, or maybe he has uh, the full gist of, um, of the judgment, of the fact of the judgment delivered yesterday, because I believe he has had had the opportunity of reading the judgment of the court of yesterday. He won't be writing what he said yesterday. So uh, the federal government is being called upon as quick as possible to comply with the order of court. Now, it's interesting to mention to the public, to the world, this argument was extensively canvassed in our various applications, in our application before the lower court, and also on appeal. Now, in 2016, there's a thesis that was captioned United Nations Office on Drug and Crime, country, country office in Nigeria, published a 691 page of thesis titled Cases and materials on extradition in Nigeria. I have the book. I look at the book. This is the book. They call it Cases and materials on extradition in Nigeria. Now, it will interest the press and the world to know <coughs> that in this book, these cases and materials on extradition in law, the forward, the forward to this book was written by no person now. Leonard Attorney General of Federation. Now, I mean, he wrote the forward. Now, you understand me and you understand what forward means. When a forward is written on a book, that means you sanctioned. You have gone through the content of that book and you sanctioned the 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 the, the, the content. Now, I will tell you something now. Because it's important for you to know. Now, in this book, mm -hmm. uh, it, it's uh, at page pages pages four to five of that book. The attorney general that I mentioned to you having sanctioned that book. Critically condemn, critically condemn a sedition, a sudden rendition in this book. He critically condemn in page four, five. I can give you this very, very bulky. Condemn a sudden rendition in his words. Quote. Listen to me carefully. In his words, the AG Federation <laughs> malamistated. It is easy to confuse a sedition with rendition. Rendition is a general term for all procedures including extradition, for returning wanted persons or aliens generally from a state. Unlawful or irregular, irregular forms of returning persons wanted for trial, unlawful or irregular forms of returning persons wanted for trial or punishment include, include abduction in his words. Include abduction, it's not what happened in this case, abduction and so-called external rendition. Now, he, he proceeded. A sudden rendition is a government sponsored arrest. Are you with me? Kidnap and abduction of persons wanted, accused, or convicted of a criminal offense, either to the state who sponsored the arrest or kidnap or abduction, or to a willing third party state. A sudden rendition denies a person of the right to challenge his transfer to the requesting or receiving state. It involves the violation of the principle of international laws. Especially where the persons transferred are subjected to torture, are you with me? Or sham criminal charge or trial. The Nuclear Affair, the Nuclear Affair of 1984 is an example of an attempt at unlawful rendition. After a coup d'etat in 1983, the federal government 
Prime Minister of Federal Military Government of Nigeria requested the British government to surrender Omar Biko, a former minister, Minister of Federation, Obla alleged to have been to have been involved in corrupt practices. Now, the, the facts of what happened in Biko's case is very clear to the world. It's a matter of common knowledge. The British government intercepted and, and, and refused to intercept and refused the phrase and taking him away from, from, from the UK. Now, this is the wordings of AG Federation. So you will tell me that it's not familiar with what extraordinary investigation means and the effect of it on the on the on the on the effect of it on on the on the state on the on the just state. By so doing, this man has exposed the country to ridicule. And I can assure you one thing, because I'm in this case, I can assure you one thing. Some international courts where these matters are pending. Are waiting for court to announcement for Nigerian court to, to exhaust their legal remedies before they can, so they can embark on their own education. They are waiting. And the pronouncement of court of appeal yesterday is apt on the point. It will entail further actions before the international court. We also entail certain persons being blacklisted, certain persons being arrested somewhere on account of the violent, gross violation of international laws. It will happen in the course of time. Now, yesterday someone asked about the, 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 the damages payable, agreeable on account of this violation of the right. Because, of course, Court of Appeal yesterday stated clearly that his right was grossly violated on account of the extraordinary admission, the extraordinary admission from Kenya to Nigeria. That may interest you to know that we have already filed an action before the Federal High Court. Wherein we raised some fundamental issues, we have invited the court to interpret 11 sessions of these uh, conventions, charter, and theatres to determine whether the federal government is in breach of this law. And that, that those questions have been answered in the affirmative yesterday that the, the federal government is in breach of this law. That matter is pending before Honorable Justice Seiko of Court Number no. 5 and is coming up for full hearing on the 14th day of December 2022. And in that case, what we'll be asking for now, the matter has having been determined, major issues are raising before the court to determine upon. To pronounce upon having been determined by court of appeal, we are now we, we, we are asking for court to award damages in the sum of 50 billion against the federal government in compensation so of um, the, the, the as reparation for, for broad violation of Namdekano's right. So it's important to highlight this part. So the court in turn also condemned the executive recklessness yesterday. The court didn't stop at declaring that the lower court has no jurisdiction to deny the, the, the charge. The court also, the president of court yesterday, constituted a further ban. You understand what I mean by constituted a further ban? So as it stands today, no Nigerian court will ever <coughs> try and the can. No Nigerian court will ever entertain any charge today, as far as this matter is concerned, or any other matter is concerned, without determining, without determining the manner in which it was brought into the country. And thankfully, yesterday, the court of appeal have resolved that issue. That judgment is a watertight judgment. Without further ado, thank you so much. I can answer your questions if I need further questions, please. Thank you. Yeah, uh, thank you very much, sir. So I, if I recall properly, nearly after the judgment, I think lately the AGF issued a statement. And I think somewhere, and somewhere he said uh, that uh, what the court on AGF did was the issue of prohibition. That they have five count charges which predate the rendition issue. And we were surprised. Is it not from the five count charges that you people jettisoned and filed an amended 15 count charge? So I don't know. Mm, so let me. Just thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, okay. um, yeah. it, it obviously, uh, uh, without prejudice to expressing the personal patronage of all, it's better, it's important at this point. For us to chronicle and also give you a trajectory of this case because for you to understand how we started namikan was granted bail sometime on 14th of april 2017 i may not i may not that should be within that period and um, the matter adjourned for trial to october 17 2017 you and i all of you here the press men witness what happened between 10th and 14th of September 2017. His premises was invaded on 10th, first, first invaded on 10th. Three persons were killed and by Nigerian soldiers. 
Then on 14th, they now wait for him. During this bloody invasion, over 28 innocent and unarmed civilians were, were more than were killed, brutally killed. Now, in an attempt, they weren't killed because they want to kill them. They were killed because they were desperately hunting for Nam the to kill him. Then by chair out of providence, Nam the Kano not only escaped being killed. Now, it's elementary part of our law, Lego students, or criminal law, that when a person is facing a trial, assuming you are you are charged with offense of um, stealing. Stealing, let me just give you bring it to a level you understand, and also for AG to understand too. Assuming you are charged with the offense of stealing, and in the course of enjoying bail granted by the court, you committed another offense, probably offense of um, armed robbery. There's no law that said that you will not be arrested on account of that offense. And it's easy for them, particularly when you are facing prosecution, they will simply, what Nigerian security agents do is for them to come to the court and wait for you on the day of trial. I have, I will have, have cases in that of that nation plethora of cases of that nation, they will come to that court, arrest you. Or they will even find a first child. Why they will arrest you is for them to interrogate you on the new offenses, then before they will file any first child. Now, assuming without considering to the fact that the federal government actually wanted any form of prosecution in this case, would they have gone to Namdekano's house on 14th of September to kill him? The answer is no. They were waiting for him to come to court on October, October 10th, October 17th, 2017. To continue the trial and probably during that period they were arresting and investigate him on fresh offense, assuming if he had committed no offense unto law. You are investigate him on the fresh offenses, probably a five fresh charge. And then Kano was there, he had announced he has oh, it was oh, he has passed to a pre trial briefing and conference, preparatory for the for trial, fixed for 17th of, uh, of, um, of October. Now, second question Had it been the federal government succeeded? God forbid, in killing Nam the Kano on the 14th of September 2027, we'll be talking about this chapter. The answer is no. Now, Nam the Kano, when he was first in, in Israel, state of Israel, he reposed an ability of facts, stating the facts of what happened in his premises, how he escaped, and in that affidavit, which is now before the public, he made it very clear in that affidavit that he's going to come back for his trial, but he needs protection from court. He need court to assure him. And give him protection. I'm showing that he offered protection for him to come back for the trial. This affidavit was filed in court, stating, urging the court to take the application for court to understand, inquire into what happened in his premises on the, on the on the 14th of September. It was filed in court sometime. That same September something, but the court didn't hear that application. It was still filed. He didn't hear that application till this year. And at subsequent adjournment, we kept on bringing bringing the facts of that. Uh, application before the court. That application was not had until a few months back this year when it was brought to Nigeria. It was forcefully first, first brought to Nigeria. Wasn't had it. Now, Nandikan is not in Kenya. He found himself in Kenya or part of Nigeria because of an attempt, desperate attempt by the federal government to kill assassinate him. The law is clear. This international law is clear. That now you want to arrest him, right? That law. The five count, five count charge you're talking about, which he was facing before an attempt was made at killing him, we have been now, we have been, we have, we have gone, we have gone on now, to have gone on now, if at all they've had submitted into traditional proceedings in Kenya. I get the point I'm making now, did you know? If they had subjected the to now the camera to extradition proceedings, then you will go through, through the proceedings. And at the end of the day, if the court in Kenya found him liable, then he has to come back to Nigeria to face his trial. Section 15 of the Resolution Act says that if he's coming back to Nigeria, he's going to face the trial of that five count charge. Now, because they didn't subject him to extradition proceeding, recognized under international laws and covenant and chapter conventions. They abducted him, they kidnapped him in Kenya, then brought him to Nigeria. Now, what the court is saying, in view of what you have done, you cannot try him again. He cannot be tried, even on that five count, he cannot be tried again. That's what the court says. 
Because you cannot put something on nothing and expect it to stand. It must fall. The foundation has been spoiled. You cannot build on a shaky foundation. So that five card, any account five card he was facing before an attempt was made at killing him can no longer prevail in the circumstance. Because say, take him back, he has to go. Go back. As he starts as he starts today, he cannot face any charge. He's barred from being prosecuted in Nigeria in any court. Whether it's caught in Adamawa or caught in Lagos or caught in Anambra or caught in Obrusuzo or whether I call them or Maya. He cannot face any time trial again. So, and I believe, and I want to believe too, that the United Attorney General Federation is fully aware of this law. But he, I believe they are trying to play to the gallery. He cannot face any trial. And for them to salvage the remaining image of this country, if at all, is for them to immediately comply with the order of court of appeal. Secondly, don't recall, recall too, that the United Nations Working Group on Arbitrary Detention had, on 20th day of June 2022, issued a communication to the federal government. After they have gone through the processes filed before, filed before a communication before them, directing the federal government to listen and account unconditionally, and also to to also compensate him for gross violation of his rights, the government turned a blind eye to that communication. And yesterday, the Court of Appeal, though the Court of Appeal didn't make reference to that communication, but on their own findings, the they, 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 judgment was basically relied upon based on the facts presented before them. Of course, you had my, the, the, the right judge, the Honorable Justice uh, uh, Nikki Toby, who was specific and firm that he is not, the, that his judgment is based on what is before him, that he's not interested in the in what's been said in open in social media here and there, what well, just something what about people are discussing over the social media that they are giving and he's giving his own judgment based on what's matters before him. It's a three hours judgment, very, very early judgment, impeccable judgment, unassailable judgment of the court of appeal. A judgment that cannot withstand the test of time, a judgment that has been able to resolve so many complicated, so, so many contentious issues. It has been able to resolve so many novel areas of laws has been put in place today, and I commend them so much. So the, 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 it was based on fact before then. There was no politics there. There was no political solution there. There was nothing like there was no external influence was there. It was based on facts and laws presented before them. And if you look at the judgment, if you listen to the judgment of the court, if you read the judgment of the court, you can agree with me totally. That these people that we are going, we are going to, we are going to, going to Supreme Court. I don't want that. That produces to their right. They can go to Supreme Court. But what we are saying is that before you take up any further step, just like what happened in the case of Asu yeah. and the federal government, Asu went to an appeal to to challenge the order of Omar Shekho. That means yes, uh, the Shekho. Court of appeal said no. <laughs> you, you, uh, you, uh, you are coming to my court, eh? Uh, you, who goes to put him or do what? Oh, yeah. Go and obey that order. Yeah. Because notice of appeal on appeal to Supreme Court cannot operate as a stay of execution. No. You must first of all <coughs> release my client to me. Then before you go to Supreme Court, we'll come back there and sort ourselves out. That's fundamental. So I believe I've been able to, to highlight some, some of these fundamental uh, issues that uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Law. I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. we need to talk, we, need to, we need to teach them the law. We need to yeah. let them understand what the law is all about. Thank, thank you so much. much. Thank, you. thank you very thank much. You for coming. Well, I, <laughs> there is a. Uh, don't understand what do and this okay? God bless you. Do you have any question, uh, Yeah, I wanted to nip in a uh, question. Okay. Um, we are all aware, you know, how the federal government uh, will uh, always flaunt court orders and uh, with impunity. Mm -hmm. And uh, we want to know, we want to know, and also uh, their friends and the world will want to know.
what if the defense counsel, after going uh, to submit the judgment to the federation, and uh, they refuse, they, both the DSS and the federal government refuse to let him go? I can assure you 100 percent they can they can't try it. Okay. Because the consequences will be so dire, will be so serious. Already they are in trouble. They are in trouble before before the international community. And the best thing for them to do now is just to salvage their money image just to release them in the Canada can. We are, we, we, if they want to go to Spring Court, I will have no problem with that. But they must, as a matter of urgency, comply. They must obey the order. This is not the law of High Court. Too. This is not of Court of Appeal. I know what it means. So they must obey it. They can go to appeal. Go and appeal. We have no problem. Before going to appeal, we must obey the order of the court. They can't hear their client illegally in the custody. When the client, when the court of appeal has declared his detention illegal, detention and arrest illegal, prohibits them from, from, the, from the court of appeal prohibited them from detaining him. Henceforth, I expected them to have called me this morning to, 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 to come over, but I'm waiting for. Let me just pick up the judgment so I can go and meet them. So if they say they will not obey that order, all of us are going to that neck tank next naked naked in public. That's not going back about it. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Barrister. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, my brother. God bless you.